This video is going to serve as a quick start guide for our new Omni board, which is our do-it-yourself circuit board for controller building. It's part of our Builder version 2 series. Uh, the main component in Builder version 2 is our Builder version 2 brain. Uh, the brain is a class compliant MIDI device that allows you to connect analog and digital connections to it um, that create a uh, MIDI message that send over USB. Brain version 2 also supports standalone MIDI, so you don't need to use a computer. You can power it with 5 volt power supply. This uh, version 2 expands on our original brain. Uh, it supports LEDs, buttons, analog controls, encoders, FSRs, RGB LEDs, uh, and LED rings for encoders. The main focus of this video is going to be around our Omni board, which allows hundreds of di different configurations uh, using buttons, um, LEDs, encoders, slide potentiometers, rotary potentiometers, and arcade buttons. For this Omni tutorial, we're going to be building an Omni board that has uh, four rotary pots, four 30 millimeter faders, and four buttons with LEDs. I have all my components here. I have my 30, 30 millimeter faders. I have my rotary potentiometers. I have my LEDs, my capacitors, and my diodes. Uh, everything that you're going to need for any of these modules is explained really well on our wiki and has uh, picture descriptions, so you're going to want to follow that. Uh, the first step that I'm going to want to do here, since I'm not using uh, an accelerometer in this module, uh, which and any of these uh, Omni configurations that do not use accelerometers, uh, you're going to need to go ahead and jump the accelerometer analog connections. You can see these, and they're pretty detailed in the wiki, the SWX, SWY, and SWZ. Uh, what you're going to want to go ahead and do is bridge uh, these three connections. There's a square and two circle connections for each one. You're going to want to bridge the uh, circle connections. Again, on our wiki, you can see detailed image. Now what I use to bridge the connections usually are just little ends of uh, components that I've cut off. So when I put my through hole capacitor in, I will end up cutting off a lot of this end, and I save these little ends and I use them for uh, jumper wires. So go ahead and solder those uh, from the back, and once you're done, uh, snip them off in the front. So that way, if you have any other components here, it doesn't hit up against them. The next thing you're going to want to do is locate R2 and R4 on the board, um, and R2 is uh, right here, and R4 is right there. And what these two connections do is they allow us to uh, have you bridge connections so we can uh, reduce the amount of uh, ribbon cables and pin headers you will need for different configurations. Uh, that's the beauty of this board is it has multiple configurations and a single circuit board. So go ahead and locate R2 and R4, and you can either use a zero ohm surface mount resistor or just a piece of solder um, is what I'm going to use. I'm just going to run a solder bridge uh, in between these two connections to connect the two pads. Okay, the next thing we are going to do is solder our diodes. Uh, the diodes are used uh, for the buttons, so the signal only flows in one direction. Uh, it's really easy to uh, solder the diodes. Uh, you solder them from the back of the board. Uh, that way they don't get in the way of anything because the diodes can be tend to be a little bit big. Um, so you're gonna, in this example, you're gonna want to do one, five, eleven, and fifteen. Since there's four buttons, there's four signal diodes, um, and it's real easy. You don't really have to even understand the difference between an anode and a cathode, uh, which is the positive and negative of a diode. Um, all you have to do is uh, most diodes have these little lines, these little black lines on them. Um, you have to line them up with the black line on the diode diagram. Uh, here's number one. I'm gonna do number one first. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all my diodes through on the back. And then I'm going to want to solder them from the top. And as soon as I'm done soldering them, I'm going to want to take a little pair of snips and snip off the edge of the connection. That way it doesn't get in the way of any of my other components. So go ahead and uh, solder those four diodes from the back and uh, snip them from the front. Okay, the next thing I need to do is uh, populate the capacitors for all the analog connections. And in this example, I'm using sliders and rotary pots. So I'm going to need to go ahead and uh, populate uh, SC, which is uh, slider capacitor, and RC, which is rotary capacitor. So for the exa this example, I'm going to be using RC 13 to 16 and SC 1 to 4. Um, these connections uh, you'll see are labeled on the front. There's both a through hole and a surface mount. I recommend using through hole for all these connections. They're easier to work with and they're uh, a little easier to find. 
you can find them mostly at a local um, electronic store and also from our website. So go ahead and uh, locate those uh, connections and what you're going to do is put your capacitor through from the front and solder it from the back. Uh, that way you can uh, get a nice clean uh, solder joint in there and then you can go ahead and snip it off uh, just like we did with the end of the diodes, go ahead and get a pair of snips and snip off the back so it doesn't get in the way of any of your other components. The next thing you're going to need to do is put a capacitor at HC3. This is a header capacitor. Um, this is going to be for um, the analog header. Every analog header is going to need a capacitor for it. Um, so go ahead and locate HC3. There's both through hole and surface mount. And put the through hole capacitor on the front and you'll see it's also labeled on the back HC3, solder it from the back and cut off the uh, connection so they don't get in the way of your header or any other components. The next thing we're going to need to do is connect our LEDs. You're going to locate LED 1 through 4 and you're going to use a through hole uh, LED. Uh, you're going to need to know the direction. Uh, an LED is also a diode so you're going to need to know the direction. Um, and to figure that out, you uh, need to know the anode and the cathode. The anode is the long leg of the LED, and the cathode is the short leg. So find the long leg and put it through the plus sign, which is the anode, and the cathode will go on the opposite side. And go ahead and solder the connection from the back and snip the connection so the excess wire doesn't get in the way of any other components. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is solder our faders in. Uh, we're going to be using these 30 millimeter faders and on the wiki you will see the exact uh, points that need, they need to be soldered in. Uh, these have hold down tabs on them. These 30 millimeter faders, there's not a spot for them here, it's not enough space. So you can go ahead and just bend those in. You don't actually need them for the connection, they're just hold downs. Uh, the, solder will work, uh, the solder on the ends will work just fine. Um, you really will see there's only actually one way to put them in. Look in the back of the board, you can see the layout uh, as to where they go. So you just want to line up the top two holes and the bottom four holes. Go ahead and solder all of these from the back um, and there will be four of them across your board. Now that I have my 30 millimeter faders all soldered in uh, from the back, I'm going to go ahead and put my rotary pots in. Uh, in this example, we are going to be populating uh, positions 13 to 16, which are clearly labeled right here on the front of the board. And I'm going to be using these uh, nine millimeter uh, rotary pots. Um, it's real simple. There's really um, kind of one way that they these go in. Um, one's labeled pot, one's labeled encoder. Um, obviously these are potentiometers because they have ends, they're not encoders, which are endless. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and populate all these um, right in where it says pot. So you're going to do this for all four pots. And then uh, just like you did with uh, most of the other components, you're going to want to go ahead from the back of the board and solder all your connections. After you have all your components in, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, populate the pin headers. The pin headers are how you connect the uh, each Omni board to the brain. So for this specific configuration, you're going to want to locate the button slash encoder row 1 to 3, which is right here. Put your 10 pin header. You're also going to want to do your LED matrix because we are using LEDs. And finally, you are going to populate the um, slide pot, slide 1 to 4, pot 13 to 16. So this would be your sliders and your rotary pots. So you want to go ahead and put these headers on your bottom of your board and then go ahead and solder them from the top. Now that we have everything soldered and connected, I'm going to show you how to connect the Omni board uh, directly to your brain version 2. This is the beauty of the Omni board. It's super simple and it's really easy to get up and running um, very quickly because um, it doesn't require any configuration. It's just plugging in ribbon cables. So locate your pin headers in the back of your um, the module, the Omni module that you just completed. And for this configuration, we're going to need three ribbon cables. So grab a ribbon cable, the first one I'll plug in is for the LED matrix. Just make sure the red line on the, um, on the ribbon cable matches up to the arrow on the pin header. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug that to the first uh, LED um, pin header on my brain version 2. And I'm going to do the same for the buttons. I'm going to line up my buttons 
Uh, and also, uh, encoders also use buttons because they're digital connections, but you don't need to know that for this example. And I'm going to plug it into the first pin header on my brain version 2. And then I'm going to take my analog, and since we're using uh, slide pot 1 to 4 and um, rotary pot 13 to 16, I'm going to use this pin header, plug it in here, and plug it into my analog section of my brain version 2. Uh, the nice thing about uh, the analogs here as they need to be grounded if they're not being used. So if I don't have a, pin, a, a ribbon cable plugged in here, they need to be grounded. And Brain version 2 comes with these little uh, grounding jumpers so you can ground off any unused connections. So go ahead and plug that into the first analog pin. And you can see I already have some stuff running here. Um, I have this connected to Ableton Live and to for demonstration purposes. Uh, I'm going to just put a, a rubber keypad over here so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, so I have just some tracks here just to show you how this all immediately works. So I turn the track on here. And then I have some effects up here. I have multiple tracks doing similar things. Metal, different filters. Beat repeat. So you can see how quickly, um, once you build your module and plug it in, it automatically works. There's no configuration to do uh, other than plugging them in and making sure you have your analogs uh, knocked off, uh, blocked off. And um, right away, I'm sending MIDI signals directly to the computer, controlling uh, things like uh, music, visuals, um, any software that you can control with uh, MIDI, you can use this uh, Omniboard to control it. And um, you can have multiple configurations. This is just one. Uh, there's literally hundreds of configurations that you can do. Um, this is just one example. I have some other examples here um, of different configurations. And the nice thing about this Omni is I can connect multiple Omnis together using the brain and have my own MIDI controller that's really easy to manage uh, with just a simple ribbon cable system.